A wise woman once said, I'm on a whole nother level. These birds are out of the league. These birds ain't batting like me. These birds ain't better than me. Hey guys, it's me, Penny Angela, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I want to talk about the re-peak and the resurgence of my two queens, Lana Del Rey and Nicki Minaj. There are so many similarities between Lana and Nicki, and this video is just going to be giving them their flowers, giving them their grace and their respect, because they are having such a kick-butt rock star year, and I really want to give them their flowers and their credit, and just, I mean, I know I speak about them so much, but... They are two women that really inspire me for two different reasons and they give me strength and courage in different ways. And they both ultimately raised me and they have made me the woman that I am today. And they are both amazing writers, poets, songwriters. And I really admire how they tackle the music industry, the music business, and everything about them to me is what makes a great role model for myself. So this video will be talking about the repeak of Lana Del Rey and Nicki Minaj. So Lana and Nicki are both my two queens. If you follow me on social media, you probably see me talk about Lana Del Rey and Nicki Minaj quite literally every day. They both are trailblazers in their respective genres and they have changed the music industry. They have birthed plenty of sons as Nicki Minaj likes to call it. They have literally changed music. They have changed how we experience music, at least for my generation, and they are some of the greatest artists of all time. Both artists have changed the trajectory of the music industry as we know it today, like Nicki Minaj, for instance. One of the ways that Nicki has changed, literally changed the music industry, is the way she fought for streaming. She fought for those streams to count towards their sales and their certifications and now streams count towards artist sales and it counts towards their ranking on the billboard list, billboard 100, 200, all of those lists. If it wasn't for Nicki Minaj standing up for that, saying, hey, we are living in a new time, people are streaming our music for free by paying basically like $12 a month for Spotify and they can listen to our songs repeatedly and you're telling me that those streams don't count. Before then, it was just buying the music. And if Nicki Minaj didn't stand up for that, a lot of these people probably would not have as many entries on the charts as they do now because their fans don't buy. But when it comes to Lana and Nicki, they have a hardcore fan base because I'm in both of them. And I will buy anything I see Lana Del Rey on. Like I've already did my Lana Del Rey collection. Like if Lana's on something, I'm gonna buy it. If Nikki's on something, I'm gonna buy it. Like you guys should be thanking her. Both of these women have <laughs> faced so much scrutiny and criticism by the media. That's another thing that they have in common, right? So obviously we are well aware of Lana Del Rey question for the culture, but beyond that, Lana was scrutinized a lot for her music. People did not understand the softness and femininity that she represented. They didn't understand the stories that she was telling, the, the poetry, the way she spoke her truth in a way that felt authentic to her. Lana was accused of glamorizing drugs, glamorizing depression, glamorizing age gaps, glamorizing grooming, glamorizing abusive relationships. Any of her life experiences or songs were considered glamorization, even though there are so many artists and rappers and singers that speak about all of those things, but they don't get the same flack that Lana gets. I wonder why. Lana was often misconstrued as she said in Brooklyn Baby they read me like a picture book by the colors like they forgot to read and uh they really did that like if you're an OG Lana fan you know the critics and the general public for the most part were not super kind to her she had to fight really hard to stand the test of time and to still be an artist in mainstream media today because 10 years ago back in 2011 2012 they were ganging up on her from her SNL performance to again her music being you know toxic and her statements on feminism and people just 
always misconstruing what she has said. Same for Nicki Minaj. Nicki has always been accused of being mean, a bitch, or she's too gimmicky, she's too weird. Why is she wearing these outfits? She's too camp, she's too pop, she's too this, she's too that. Her butt's too big, her boobs too big. Is her boobs real? Is her butt real? Is her butt fake? What about if my butt fake? Both of these women have been through the ringer by the media. And I also think that's why they have such a die hard fan base because we know if it wasn't for the fans if it wasn't for the barbs and nalana stands for lana like who would be defending them honestly especially when it comes to nikki like who would be defending her if it weren't for the barbs to say hey that's not real that's not true no this is what really happened like get your facts straight I remember back, I believe it was like a documentary on MTV many moons ago. I remember watching this when I was younger. Nikki said, if a man speaks about, you know, hey, do this, I don't like that, blah, blah, blah. He's considered a boss. He's considered a person of authority, someone that you should listen to, someone that you should take advice from and respect. But once a woman does the exact same actions, she's a bitch, she's mean. She's on a power trip. She's too aggressive. And she is so right for that. I came up under Wayne. And Wayne has his way of doing things. When Wayne walks on a set and say, don't talk to me, have my music ready, get the up out of my face and I'm gonna blow this to your face all day. It's cool. But every time I, every time I put my foot down and stand up for myself, it's like, We've heard about Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Nicki Minaj shut down a photo shoot. Oh my God, Everyone's, no one wants to work with Nicki Minaj. I'm glad you heard. Now, when I come to a photo shoot, let it be of quality. You know why? Because I put quality in what I do. I spend time and I spend energy and I spend effort and I spend everything I have, every fiber of my being to give people quality. So if I turn up to a photo shoot and you had and you got a fifty dollar clothes budget and some sliced pickles on court, you want to know what? No, I am gonna leave. Is that wrong for wanting more for myself, wanting people to treat me with respect? But you know what? Next time they know better. But had I accepted the pickle juice, I would be drinking pickle juice right now. When I am assertive i'm a bitch when a man is assertive he's a boss he bossed up he bossed up yeah he bossed up. no negative connotation behind bossed up but lots of negative connotation behind being a bitch so right and even now people still have their issues with her saying she's too this or she's she's too that she's not this she's not that she's not nice she's not a girl's girl it's like they will never let that go because Nikki is a really strong woman and she stands on business like she really does. And not only are both of these women severely misconstrued by the media, but they are also really underlooked. Both of these artists have not won any Grammys. They are often, I don't know, like, as I said before, if it wasn't for the diehard fan base to defend them and to always like represent them, I don't know, the media would just keep running with it and like trying to beat them down because they are trailblazers. When someone or something is trying to bring you down, it's likely because they see something in you that's really special. And I think that's what the media has done to both of them, right? These two artists are extremely special, very rare for their time. You don't come across a Nicki Minaj or a Lana Del Rey every day. You don't, and there has been many artists even up till now recently that have tried to emulate their essence and greatness but it falls very short because they are just very unique and different so it is mind-blowing to me that they have not won a grammy like truly truly it's it, it literally does not make sense Grammys don't mean anything, but I understand to the general public, it is the most prestigious award for a music artist to have. And it literally doesn't make sense that Nicki and Lana don't have an award. 
Another similarity between Lana and Nikki is that they are unapologetic and they speak their mind, which is something that I admire about them. From Lana question for the culture to Nikki and her vaccine mandates and speaking about her opinions about the vaccine, her concerns, which are completely valid, okay? You are allowed to question anything, especially if it's going to be injected or inserted into your body. You are allowed to have questions, even if they may sound dumb. There is no dumb question besides not asking the question. Both Lana and Nikki literally have been in the tie for the I don't give an F for. They really want the IDGAF war because they don't care. Lana will tell you to go F yourself. Nikki will tell you to go F yourself. They don't give an F and I love that about them. I love women that are strong and unapologetic. We are told to always apologize and I like when I see a strong woman like don't like to not double down on it, you know? And then we fast forward to 2023, where we are. Nicki Minaj, her first single of the year is Red Ruby The Sleeves. It's like a hundred on them horses when we fixing the lead, but I don't mess with horses since Christopher Reeves. Uh-oh, uh-oh, ah! Red Ruby The Sleeves to this day is the best rap song of 2023. Like there has not been a song that is better than Red Ruby the Sleeves. Like she just came out swinging on that song and Red Ruby the Sleeves is the highest ranking solo debut on the Billboard 100 for a rap song. The highest debut, Red Ruby the Sleeves. Put respect on her name. And on them horses when we fixing to leave, but I don't mess with horses since Christopher Reeves. Uh oh, uh oh. <gasps> she is, she is, she was so like, she's so iconic for Red Ruby. Like, Red Ruby really did what needed to be done. Red Ruby did what needed to be done. Now we're in 2023, post pandemic, the award shows are back, touring is back, live music is back. We're back, baby. And these two artists have really had such an amazing resurgence, especially with the way Gen Z has taken liking to both Nikki and Lana. Then we have, of course, Lana's Ocean Boulevard that came out in March 2023 of this year. It had peaked at number three on the Billboard 200 album chart. It peaked at number one on the Billboard, I believe, alternative music charts. It is so critically acclaimed. Nothing but rave reviews. I believe Fantano even gave it a really high ranking. He doesn't mean anything, but I know some people care about that. And I know Pitchfork gave. I'll put the Pitchfork review somewhere in here, but it got a pretty high ranking for Pitchfork. Lana made her debut back into the tour world this year at the Mita Festival in Brazil, where she came on stage with that blonde Marilyn wig and she did a and W. I I will never forget that. I was streaming it. Of course I was streaming it. And I was like, wow, she's back and better than ever. In addition to having the sold out festival shows, Lana has sold out, I believe her largest venue of over 65,000 people. This show broke Ticketmaster and it was her concert in Mexico City I believe August 15th or 18th was the day I believe it was the, the show at the Foral Soul in Mexico City I believe I don't know where I left off because my camera stopped filming but I believe I was discussing how Lana had one of the or probably the biggest venue she has played of over 65,000 people in Mexico City this past August and this show broke Ticketmaster I don't know if I already said that but the show broke Ticketmaster I mean most of her shows were breaking Ticketmaster tickets are selling out extremely fast for Lana Del Rey now in 2023 which of course, as a fan, you're sad, but also as a fan, you're happy, especially for us OG fans that have been here from the beginning and to see her rise like a phoenix and become this like the success that we know she has always deserved. It's, it's a beautiful thing. As for Nicki Minaj in 2023, she has also had an amazing year. She announced her new fifth studio album, Pink Friday 2. Of course, the dates have changed from November 17th to now it's going to be December 8th. So we are almost there. And, but in addition to Pink Friday 2, Princess Diana remix with Ice Spice debuted at number four in the Billboard 100. Barbie World also featuring Ice Spice debuted on 
on the Billboard 100 at number seven for the iconic Barbie movie. She debuted on number 20 with Lil Uzi Vert for Endless Fashion. Even if my name was suddenly Nundies, still couldn't check me. <laughs> and when she said, I have a Republican doctor, make my ass great again, my God. She also, of course, went viral with the Poundtown 2 remix with Sexy Red, and that collaboration has done wonders for Sexy in her career. If you work with Nikki, your career, your price will go up. The demand is there. It has always been there. Even if people tried to stop it, there will always be a demand for Miss Nicki Minaj. Okay? Okay. So with the similarities between both Nicki and Lana, even in 2023, both having albums coming out or have already came out this year. And guess what? Both Nikki and Lana are nominated for the 2024 Grammys. <laughs> this is Nikki's first time being nominated in seven years, so it's really monumental. There's a lot of discourse about, hey, why are you guys nominating her for only the collab song? Red Ruby to Sleeves definitely should have been nominated, but I'm happy that like, Nikki is being nominated for Barbie World for something that is also so uniquely tied into her brand. I wrote down here, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. So for 2024, Nicki Minaj, the Grammy nominations she and I Spice also have for Barbie World include for Best Rap Song for Barbie World. She's also nominated for, I have it written down here, Best Song for Visual Media. And she's also nominated for Best Compilation Soundtrack. So she has three nominations for the 2024 Grammys. As for Miss Lana Del Rey, my bestie, my mother, she has five Grammy nominations for Best Pop Duo Group Performance for Candy Necklace with John Batiste. A&W is nominated for Song of the Year and Best Alternative Music Performance. As for her album, do you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? It's nominated for Best Alternative Album of the Year and is also nominated for Album of the Year. Major. If the Grammys snub Lana and Nikki, I will never forgive them. Having both of my mothers be nominated for the same year and knowing that they have been snubbed throughout their careers, it's like, don't play with me. As of, I believe, Last Thursday, this past last Thursday, Nicki Minaj has become the first solo black rap artist to have a cover of US Vogue. That is a cover that isn't split between other models or other mothers. There has been a lot of misinformation about that. Nicki is the first to have her own solo cover that is not a part of a series for that month of different alternative covers. So I feel like that's where a lot of the misconception is uh, being held, but Nikki is the first to have done it. And she looks stunning on the cover. I subscribed to Vogue to get the magazine. And I'm gonna also buy it at newsstand, on newsstands too. I don't have a coffee table, but I will one day and it's going to look amazing on my coffee table. Lana Del Rey and Nicki Minaj are showing women that you can have a re-peak in your success at any age. Lana is 38 years old and Nikki is turning 41 next month on the day of her new album. To see both of these women who have been dragged throughout the media, people have tried to take their spot wrongfully so in such a vindictive and evil way, people have copied them and emulated them. People have recorded their personal phone conversations in the hopes to harm them or ruin their reputation. They have been through so much and to see the way the public is changing their look on them is just really satisfying for me as a fan of both of them because I feel for the first time in a long time, everyone is seeing what I see in them. Everyone is seeing what their fans see in them. It has taken a long time, but everyone is finally seeing that Nicki Minaj and Lana Del Rey, they are always right. They are never wrong. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm being a little biased. As I wear both my Lana necklaces, get on my Lana chains. I just wanted to talk about the amazing year that Lana and Nicki are having and they will continue to have in 2024. 
Nikki's going on a world tour soon. Tour dates will be announced soon. She has the Pink Friday 2 perfume coming out in December. Pink Friday 2 is out December 8th. Nikki also hosted VMAs when she killed the performance of Big Difference. She did Red Ruby to Sleep. She did Last Time I Saw You. It's really the year of these two women. A few videos ago, I was sitting on here really sad about the trajectory of my life and I'm younger than both of them by a handful of years but it goes to show that like I may be down but I'm not out I may be down but I'm not out anything can happen as Lana once said don't give up because you never know what the new what the next day may bring or what the new day may bring and Margaret maybe tomorrow you'll know maybe tomorrow well, no. Shout out to Lana. Shout out to Nicki Minaj. On the rare occasion you or anyone from your team happened to come across this video, I just want to say thank you so much for what you have done, not only just for music and writing, because I'm a poet myself and I really respect that these are songwriters that write their own words and their own lyrics, but what they have done for women. Lana and Nikki both inspire me and give me strength in different ways. Lana gives me a lot of creative strength, a lot of introspective strength, strength in my softness and femininity, strength in speaking my truth in the way I need to speak it, strength in the way that it's okay to create any sort of version of yourself that you need to protect yourself, like it's okay to do that. It's okay to reinvent yourself. It's okay to change your hair color. It's okay to, to fuck up. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to love strongly. Like she inspires me in that way. And Nikki inspires me in a completely different way. Obviously Nikki and I are both black women. So the way Nikki gives me strength is a way that Lana obviously cannot cause she just cannot, she's not a black woman. The way she is just so determined from her mixtape days to now, like how she came on the scene with the men, out rapping Jay-Z and Kanye West and Rick Ross on Monster. Like, was Rick Ross on Monster? I don't even know about the men on the song. It's all about Nicki. Like, she gives me so much power, like so much strength to be a strong, woman not just a strong black woman just to be a strong woman a business woman to be unapologetically fearless so i just want to say thank you to those two women cheers to them cheers to having a new peak in your career at any age and you know i didn't i don't have the easiest youtube career you know i'm not a youtuber that like popped on here and blew up immediately like that is not my story it's too late for that to be my story because i have been on here and i have not blown up immediately i didn't come out here with my first video getting like hundreds of thousands of views even 10k views in the first day but i will leave you with this i feel if you start so high you can only kind of go down you know, and I, I see it a lot on social media with people that just come out swinging with a lot of views, millions of followers on TikTok, millions of this and that, and millions of likes and views. But I feel like once you start so high, you can kind of realistically only go down, right? But if you start down, you can only go up. Like it can't get any worse than this in terms of like YouTube, right? Like I'm, I'm not monetized. I don't have a lot of views. I don't have a lot of subs. I'm grateful for everything I have. I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm grateful for the journey. I can literally only go up. <laughs> yeah, you guys keep chasing your dreams. I'm gonna, ooh, the birds are migrating. I'm gonna leave it here, but I love you, my little trash stars. I love Nicki Minaj. I love the barbs. I love the Lana stands especially us OG stands and uh yeah I will see you guys in my next video Mwah. bye toodles